What's up, friends? Welcome to The Beautiful Mess, where we talk about tools and tactics to improve your life. I'm with a very special guest, Nicholas Carlton Chamberlain uh, of NCC Audio. This man does a lot of audio production. In particular, he likes to do podcasts. And that's what we're going to talk about today, is how to start your podcast, why podcast, and all things podcasting. So, Nick, welcome to the show. Hey, Paul, thanks for having me. I'm excited to get diving deep into this subject. Yeah, so last time we talked a little bit about your origin story, getting Mm -hmm. into podcasting and kind of like a little bit of the why behind it. Um, But I guess let's get into the origin story of podcasting or as you coined the (laughs) word, I I don't know if this is a word that was been in the lexicon before, but slogging uh, as opposed (laughs) to blogging. Yeah, so I started my own podcast about, quote unquote, podcast, I think it was about two years ago, and I had my website up and running, and me and my friend Brandon Manderson, we were recording our podcast, but I was just posting it as a blog, an audio blog, and so I did was I did not have an RSS feed pointing to Apple Podcasts or Spotify or anything because I haven't I had not figured that out yet. So I was joking. What's what does blog stand for? Blog is from web log. And I was like, well, I'm doing a sound log, so I'm going to be slog. So we were slogging away and and we were recording our <laughs> weekly slogs, but slog didn't really take off. I mean, there's the word podcast or slog. I don't even know where the word podcast came from. I guess I could do a quick Google search. But right. Then, I'm, I'm actually curious now. What, what, how did podcast come about and why didn't slog come become the thing? I mean, I, it, it seems to be the logical you know, yes, thing. I, I know. mean, we got vlogs. Why not slogs? Yeah. And I just did a quick search. A um, podcast started off originally as audio blogs. So they could have been a logs. A logs so or sound logs. <laughs> I like slogs, but I guess someone coined podcast early on. So I mean, it's yeah. it's we're in the beginning stages, right? That that's what you were saying to me. Like this is the early stages of podcasting. So who knows? There could be an evolution into the slogging world of um, podcasts. Yeah, I mean, just talking about it, just going back, like so. Blogs are you know <laughs> written web logs. Okay. So there are about 600 million blogs out there compared to podcasts. There are two around 2 million podcasts. And out of the 2 million, there are about 850,000 active podcasts. So we're still in the very beginning stage of podcasts. So if you're ever wondering like, oh, there's too many podcasts out there. uh, No, there's not. I'm okay if every single person has their own personal podcast. Just start a podcast. It's fun. And it'll help your communication skills and your networking and a lot of other things that we can get into. Absolutely. I, I can attest to those two things of, of networking and then also um, just getting better on camera, getting better at talking. I mean, starting my YouTube channel was the same thing. It was like, I, you know, it's a new field. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm just going to dive into it. I'm going to embrace the beautiful mess of uh, yeah. podcasting and, and uh, making videos. And so here we are. Uh, so I guess if someone's interested in podcasting, like what can they expect? Like what's a time commitment? Uh, mm. What like how how does that work? OK, yeah. So let's just kind of like start at the beginning. So if you want to start a podcast, you need to record your voice. So how are you going to Mm. record your voice? You're going to need a microphone and I do not recommend using your phone microphone or your built in microphone on your computer. I would suggest trying to save a hundred dollars and you can get a very good quality podcast uh, sounding microphone. So uh, one of the a good entry level podcast microphone is going to be the Audio Technica 2020, 2021. Like the AT 2020, I think it is or something like yes, that. Yes, it is a USB m- dynamic microphone that you can just plug straight into your computer and then you plug your headphones into the microphone. Wow. We can get into other uh, setups in and a, in a little bit, but so you're recording. And so a pod, 
it just really depends on <laughs> your ideal listener of how long you want to record your podcast. So before you start a podcast, you have to kind of determine your why behind it. So you have to do a yeah. lot of brainstorming and like figuring out, okay, so I want to be do a podcast. Why do I want to do a podcast? Who is going to listen to this podcast? Because ultimately, if you want a successful podcast, your podcast it has to be for the listener. So everything you say or you're talking about needs to give value to the listener. Or it's just not going to grow unless you're a super famous individual and you can just say whatever you want and not care about your audience because you're, you already have your audience. But if you're starting off, you have to really think about your, I guess your, as I say, customer avatar, but your listener avatar, really dive deep and yeah. think about them. What, what does that entail? Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. Like you have to define your target audience. Mm -hmm. uh, so like what, what questions should someone die? Like think about when they're defining their listener avatar or mm -hmm. like their mm -hmm. ideal, you know, customer or like individual, how, how do they start brainstorming that? I think it's, you think about the, the end, the end beginning, the end of the beginning. So what, do, who do you want to talk to and what do they want? what do you want them to get out of the podcast? And yeah. so it just really depends on you and your genre of podcasting. So I guess for an example, let's just say you're an online business owner and you sell courses and e-memberships and you sell a specific course on a specific topic. There's so many courses out there, okay? So, and you want to start a podcast to generate more leads to come into your course, to sell more courses. So that's going to be your outcome at the end of the podcast. People, I want people to take action to purchase my product or service. Or if you have a nonprofit organization, I want people to donate at the end of it or just some kind of call to action or yeah. I don't know. It just really depends on you and your perspective and what you want uh, people yeah. to feel or to know at the end of the pod each podcast episode. That, that's interesting. So you're like you're talking about like kind of the customer journey uh, mm -hmm. with your brand or your company yeah. or just you as a person, like your personal brand. And I guess like you have to think about how you can add value, right? I mean, it's just mm -hmm. like obviously you know you have your call to action. Um, you know, whatever it is, like whether it's buying your product or subscribing it's to your, subscribing. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I guess, how do you define the value proposition for your listener that like, because like, obviously if I mm -hmm. just say, you know, buy, buy cookies and you're not into cookies, mm -hmm. that's a bad idea. Um, oh, I, I guess. <laughs> but then for you at that point, you have to be like, okay, these are all the ingredients in your podcast that go into creating the perfect cookie. This is all the work and effort that goes into the perfect cookie. Here's each step. And like, and at the end of it, the listener is like, I really, really want a taste of this cookie. And then you tell them, well, I know you can find this cookie by going to mycookie.com and you can get all of these amazing cookies and you can, or you could download, <laughs> you know, my <laughs> cookie, <laughs> <laughs> my cookie sheet which gives you all the ingredients and you can cook that own cookie for yourself <laughs> so wow I, I was not expecting <laughs> you to run with that analogy but i love it i mean that that makes complete sense uh i guess like an example that yeah. i can think of off the top of my head is like a youtube podcast mm -hmm. um i've listened to a couple of youtube podcasts and oftentimes they're selling their service to you like mm -hmm. how to kind of get more views get more subscribers so like there's a tangible uh, benefit one from listening to the podcast like I have an interest in listening to this because they have the cutting edge information on YouTubing but then mm. they're also the professionals in you know YouTube so if I need more help they've helped me out by giving me this free information and I respect their knowledge on that subject so I want to like you know get their particular um, mm -hmm. insights on YouTubing by like subscribing to them so I feel like that's yeah. another um, like way of explaining that same thing but yeah, cookies. There's just so many, like, I guess it, you, it really depends on your why and what and why you're wanting to do a podcast. And then we can figure it out 
uh, how to make your podcast match your why and your ultimate goal. So now they've defined their target audience. What mm-hmm. what are like the next steps to actually getting okay. started? Like, do they have to like write out a plan? Like, what what does that look like uh, for someone that's just getting started? I I would yeah. So you you have your customer avatar. You have your equipment and you're ready to start recording i would suggest coming up with at least 10 to 12 episode ideas that you are going to record you already know i have these locked in i am going to record these at least three months of weekly podcasts because so often over the last couple of years i have to help people start podcasts and they stop right before they get to episode 10 or that's like for some reason, people under, they won't go past episode 10. That, that's like the magical number. Yeah. Like I hear that most people either don't get to episode 10 or that's that's where it kind of stops. So we're, we're actually recording episode 11 <laughs> or 12. Yeah, so I, I think it. I've broken the sound barrier. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Because I mean, even in my podcast launching plan for the people to help out, I'm saying, okay, we're doing 12 episodes. Like we're planning out 12 episodes before we launch your podcast. So... Get pod, podcasts, batch record your podcast or record at least 12 episodes before you launch episode one. So wait, you're not. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> How many do you record? I am suggest. Well, I'm suggesting to plan out 12. And if you have time, I would suggest recording 12 because I know you're on a weekly wow. schedule right now. It's a lot of work for you to like think of these and plan these out each week. So that's a lot of brain right. mental activity. So it might be a little stressful for you to think about a new episode every week. That's that's crazy. So like actually, so we, when we launched the t- Beautiful Mesh show, I think we had like maybe two or three episodes ahead. And that mm-hmm. was, it was nice to have that cushion where like, I knew that like it was already ready to go. I just needed to edit it, get it ready to, to, to deliver. Um, but that's interesting, like maybe even having like 12 or, you know, mm-hmm. a larger number. I mean, that probably give you a lot more comfort starting out. Uh, I've also heard of like a technique of releasing maybe two or three episodes when you first launch. That way yeah. people have enough content totally. for you to kind of like dive into what your podcast is since when you first released up. Uh, you know, most of the time you have one episode. So yeah, I would, I would at least release with three to five episodes and have some episodes in the can. And so then you have all of those other 10 episodes scheduled, ready to go. And now you're just focusing on, you know, interviews or whatever you're doing for the next couple of uh, episodes, but it's a lot of time commitment up front. It's, it's going to be a lot of work and it just the editing part is going to, uh, it's going to take a while. I guess before we dive into the editing, I think we can go there next. But like, I just want to encourage you, like if you're struggling with ideas, just start like a running oh. list. Like, this, oh, yeah, we've we've started doing that. I mean, so if, if you're um, listening, I, I've got my phone out here and I've got my notion up. No, and uh, like basically um, Spencer and I like this is kind of a, the idea place where we're just like you know putting Idea all of our buckets. ideas down and so like usually like i try to like come up with an like i i, I made this you know a goal of like, like coming up with one idea every single day like you you can usually think of one and like the mm-hmm. practice of just doing that like creating mm. a title and then maybe just like a paragraph or two of like or, or bullet points of like what this episode would look like you know it's it doesn't uh, have to be difficult like make it easy on yourself yeah i i Got this really good idea from Graham, Graham Cochran. He the one and only. Yeah, I know. He suggested the uh, big five idea categories, and so I guess for an example for me, I was talking about podcasting on a podcast I was doing. So I was like, okay, uh, let's talk about uh, monetization. Let's talk about equipment. Let's talk about uh, uh, editing techniques. And let's talk about, I don't know. I don't know. I can't think of the other things I was talking about. So those are three big idea buckets. And now in underneath each idea bucket, come up with multiple sub sub themes within those major themes. And so if you have five main themes and then you put 10 ideas under those themes, that's 52 episode ideas. And you can knock that out in an hour or less. That's awesome. I mean, that that's like the the fast track of getting like those ideas. It's like, boom. Mm-hmm. like don't don't make it difficult on yourself. Just yeah. like simplify it, like you're saying. Like make those five categories and then come up with ten ideas each. 
done. You got the gear. You're yep. planned out hour, two hours. Um, that's that's great. So, OK, so they now have their um, let's see, we, we've we've taken them. They built their target audience. They've got some ideas now. They've got to record it. Mm-hmm. What, what should they do? OK, if you're looking for free options, which a lot of people like the free options, if you're on a Mac, you can use GarageBand. You can yeah. use your QuickTime player. But OK, if you're going to be I'm su- I'm going to be suggesting a digital audio workstations because you're going to be recording in there and then you're going to be editing your podcast afterwards. So right. GarageBand is free for Mac. Audacity is free for GarageBand and PC <laughs> for <laughs> Mac, Mac and, and PC. PC. Yep, yeah, yep. Uh, there's a program called Reaper for Mac and PC, but it's sixty dollars. Or you can do an endless trial, but it's very affordable. But it is a little complicated, and those are probably the best free options and then we can get into paid options after that there are so many paid options right right i mean you also have like you know i think you can even record on voice memos like you know like there there are like the very basic things like on your phone or like i think anchor itself that that platform for podcasting that that's what we're using uh for the beautiful masses anchor um i think uh, Nick probably has some better ideas for like more professional level uh, podcasts, like resources for platforms and stuff. Um, I'm currently recording in Logic Pro, um, music productionist in me. I mean, that that's probably overkill for podcasts, but that's another option. I mean, you've got, if you're already doing the creative suite, maybe you're a content creator, uh, you could use Adobe Audition. Yep, that's what I use, and I highly recommend for podcast editing and production. If you're going to be getting in, into your own podcast editing production, and you already have the Creative Suite, I would highly suggest using Audition. Or if you're if you have if you're willing to spend thirty dollars a month on an Adobe Audition, I would highly recommend that. But of course, if you already have Pro Tools, you can use that too. Right. Oh, Pro Tools is another great yeah. great option. I. It's funny, I'd never, like, I, I knew audition, like, podcasting, that kind of stuff. Like, it, it seemed to, like, go hand in hand when you mentioned podcasts, uh, uh, Adobe Audition. I didn't realize how much easier it makes life. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I had another, you know, podcaster kind of walk me through their, like, rack, uh, you know, list. And you can just basically take those effects, apply it. And then boom, like with two mm-hmm. two steps or one step, like you've got your audio just sounding nice and crisp. Yeah. And there's programs like Descript. Have you heard of that? Oh, man. So, I, I'm super yeah. interested in Descript mm-hmm. right now because like that is seems like the great, uh, yeah. you know, automated tool to like yeah. make life simpler i i I gotta try it i haven't used it as a recording program but i have uploaded audio files into it it creates the transcript instantly and then you select and highlight words and you delete the words and it edits your video or podcast that way and the paid version you can say find every single um and it selects every single um and you hit delete and it'll delete all the ums but then I'm not sure how the edits would be. Their AI has like eliminate like the the filler words. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I, I feel like that's the, going to be the future of, you know, production it, it, is yes. having like AI like do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Um, I was talking to uh, Nick earlier. It's like when you edit like a podcast like this, like I'm switching back and forth the cameras. I, I'm trying to figure out a, a easier way to do it. But like to create that production value, you know, I have to go in manually and switch it every single time someone talks. Whereas uh, with the invention of AI and now you have things like Riverside, that's yeah. another great option for recording um, virtually with other people to have that high quality. But like if you want like that super high quality and you're recording like, you know, I'm recording here, Nick is recording where he is. And then in post, I put it all together. Yeah, It's a lot of time, like it, t- it takes time and it's like, you know, takes work to cut everything up and yeah i guess that's like technical and confusing for most people but like we're both creators so it's like it's easy for us and i was going to say another creepy thing about descript is if you forget a word or something you can type it in and it will artificially create your voice using the same like waveforms from your other voice so you can make people say things so that's a little scary to me (laughs) 
<laughs> right. I, I think you do have to like upload like a certain number of minutes or like you have to speak like a script that they give you and then they like analyze your voice. Obviously, if you're working with someone else, I'm sure there's legality of using their <laughs> voice in, uh, you know, you probably yeah. have to get their permission before analyzing their voice. But uh, it's it's very fascinating um, mm-hmm. technology. I mean, I, I could see it being very useful in a YouTube video. If you recorded it and then post, you're like, I said the wrong word right there. Yeah. It was, you know, 500, not 400, whatever, you know, and then you can go back, change that yeah. word. And it sounds pretty convincing. Like you should look it up and see people recording. I was going to say like another important thing that people always have questions about. It's like, well, how do I do a remote podcast, or remote interview, like what mm-hmm. we're doing right now? So if you use Zoom meeting, you can use that. Yeah. You can hit record. But I also always recommend to record your audio locally or your video locally. And then there's like what Paul said, the Riverside.fm. There's other out there, but Riverside, you it's like a fancy zoom where it will record your audio and video locally as well but on their platform and in their cloud and then you could what i'm going to be doing or i do well i will be doing is i am like then a, a, a freelance audio engineer i can create the riverside account uh the session and i can be in there as an audio engineer and i can c- connect two other people and so That's and awesome. then I just like hide and mute myself in my screen and just make sure their levels are okay and everything is running smoothly. That That's brilliant. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it definitely seems like a convenient way of recording. So, okay. They, they've got that now. Mm-hmm. These are some of the platforms that they can use um, to record it. They, you know, maybe they get the audio technica mic that you recommended. And then how do they get this onto Apple podcasts, oh, okay. uh, all those platforms you know because everyone uses different pl- platforms mm-hmm. is, is it hard like the, you know that that was my question when starting out it's like you have all these different yes platforms like how do you get it on all those there are so many different platforms and it really depends on what you want so if you just want to do something free and simple you use anchor if you want some more like stats and abilities to look at things or just uh, something else you can use something like Lipson, Buzzsprout, Podbean, I think, um, yep. and they all have like beginner to like enterprise level. And what I'm using right now, it's called Megaphone, and Megaphone is only a enterprise system, so it's pretty expensive. But with that, I can have as many podcast episodes as I want on there. And it has like very high quality stats. So I don't have to worry about like connecting my RSS feed with another like third party stat aggregator. And what's cool about Megaphone, it has dynamic ad insertion, which is really good for people who have sponsors or need ads. Or if you just want to have a a message to share for two weeks, you can place it in the beginning, the end or the middle wherever you want to place the ad you can say, I want this ad to run for two weeks and then after two weeks stop. And so it's in the feed and then it's out of the feed. And what's also cool about Megaphone is you can have two feeds, an ad free feed and feed with the ads. So you can, those are different options. Wow. Wow. I mean, that, that's awesome. Uh, definitely a very helpful tool. And so, uh, I guess like going back to it, like if you're looking for a place like to get started, like obviously I, I started on Anchor. That's mm-hmm. been a great tool for producing. However, like if you're looking for someone to help you on that journey, like if you, you're like, I want a podcast, but I don't maybe have the time or I'm not certain. That's where you could hire someone like Nick. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nick does the whole package. Like he, he can take you from square one, just the idea even to Mm -hmm. producing it and so like you can get someone that's a professional in the field to kind of walk you through those steps to make it simpler and easy uh just depends on what you're looking to do Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. obviously you can you can take the the messy route like i did and do it on your own but obviously if you don't have the time and energy to invest in it highly recommend uh, getting someone like nick to be your your guide um, through through this yeah, of journey. course. And if y'all have any questions at on each of the steps, feel free to email me, nick at nccaudio.com. I'm creating more YouTube videos on the podcast production process. And yeah, I'm trying to help people create high quality podcasts. Yeah. Right. I mean, on your YouTube channel, you even talk about remote podcasting. You just did your one on Zoom. So like if mm-hmm. you want the details of like a visual of seeing that in action, just go to his YouTube, NCC Audio. 
um, mm-hmm. or we'll, we'll see what the rebrand ends up being. <laughs> Nick is going to be rebranding his company soon. So we're excited to see what that turns out to be. Um, but yeah, if you're looking to start a podcast, he's a great person to ask. Uh, I think you even have like a, a resource for like, like different tiers, right. Of like gear to get. Yes, yes, yes. Um, it's, where is it? I think if you just go to nccaudio.com, it's like a little pop-up, but all the YouTube videos, I have it on there. It's um, nccaudio.com slash jumpstart. It's this big yeah. PDF. It might be a little overkill, but I do go through the different <laughs> levels of equipment. So here's like cheap, here's middle, and here's like what Joe Rogan's using and whatnot. So yeah, I do go through the, all that those steps. And then real quickly, like, how about monetizing? Because like mm-hmm. some people, you know, they might want to make some money off their podcast. Like, is it easy to monetize? Like, what should someone expect or should they not expect to monetize right away? Like, I guess, it, yeah. What, what are your thoughts on monetization? With it, podcasting? Again, it's going to be very difficult. Uh, if you're like a hobbyist, it's going to be hard to monetize. But if you already have a business or product to sell, your podcast comes from your marketing budget. It is a it's going to be generating leads, nurturing leads to people to purchase your product or your service. And if you have a a, like a hobby podcast and you want to monetize it, you have to get very specific with your audience, understand your audience and know what they want. So when you go to a sponsorship, you can tell them, this is my audience. I know them. They will buy this. Will you please sponsor this podcast? And then you can do affiliate marketing as well. Just like just telling other people, about other products and services and and you just lead them from your podcast to go purchase another product using promo codes and stuff like that. Right. That that's awesome. I mean, and then once you build your podcast big enough, I mean, Joe Rogan just switched over from, I think you, YouTube was like one of his big platforms that he had all of his episodes to Spotify. And we were just talking about this. I think it was like a $200 million yep. deal that they, yep. they landed. So who knows? Maybe you're the next Joe Rogan that's going <laughs> to land a two hundred dollar million uh, deal with uh, Spotify. <laughs> Who knows? So, Nick, h- how can people find you? Like, how mm-hmm. can they connect with you if they're interested in like, you know, ask, picking your brain or yes. like, you know, wanting your services? So you can go. I'm on Instagram at Nick Chamberlain. It should be just Nick C five twenty. Facebook is Nick Nick Chamberlain. Uh, email Nick at nccaudio.com or just go to my website, nccaudio.com or YouTube, NCC Audio. Anything about NCC Audio and Nick, I'm, you're gonna be found, you'll find me on Google. And that's another awesome thing about starting a podcast and creating episodes. You're gonna be found on Google a lot easier. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Nick, for being on the episode. As always, I like to highlight a member of the messy fam so this one comes from podbean it's a newer app it's kind of cool it's a little bit more social for a podcast so uh be sure to check it out but this one comes from kelly and kelly says some great advice in this episode i'm trying to remember which episode that was but uh yes oh it was how to overlap into the work uh like a what was that one called how to overlap into work you love so Um, Thank you so much, Kelly, for that review. And if you want to join the Messy family, be sure to rate, review, subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, Thanks so much, Nick, again, for being on the, the episode. Until next time, stay messy.